Now I'm going to go back to the short circuit button so that we can finish off doing our arc flash hazard study. Now when I go to um, the arc flash hazard tab, let's take a look at this. We actually have three different calculation types, NFPA 70E, IEEE 1584, and an enhanced version of 1584. Um, I don't re recommend the IEEE or the uh, NFPA 70E calculations. These are the old Dottie Leah calculations. All their test data has already been input into the IEEE 1584. So that has become the consensus standard since 2002. So I recommend IEEE 1584. We do, however, we've enhanced that um, for certain cases. Um, we have an enhanced version where we took the IEEE 1584 calcs, actually modified them so they worked on 695 volt IEC drives or marine conductor systems that have a higher voltage. Um, the reason that we needed to do that is is the 1584 um, calcs um, didn't really cover the voltage gap between 650 and 2300 volts very well. So we modified that, came up with a better solution. So if you're, if you got a 695 volt IEC drive, you may want to look at running that. Uh, most cases will run 1584. We typically calculate the 100% worst case arcing current based on 1584. We bracket that with a lower value, typically the 85% value. Um, just in case a lower arcing current takes longer to trip if the upstream device is a very inverse curve or something it may take longer to trip and cause a worst case arc flash based on NFPA 70E we calculate the arc flash boundary energy at 1.5 cals for less than 6 cycle clearing 1.2 for greater than 6 cycle but you can adjust it if you choose we have arc flash spreadsheets for both branch and bus currents and depending on how you want to look at it we have a threshold um, incident energy level where you can determine based on voltage level certain thresholds where you may have your uh, electricians wearing daily wear, um, say an 8 cal daily wear, will flag the arc flash if it's above that value for any piece of equipment. We have up to five different default working distances that you can use um, for both um, open air and um, uh, enclosed systems and of course everything can be done in in metric or English units we have full ANSI standard calculations for our arc flash hazards it's the only program I know that does that where we have both momentary interrupting and 30 cycle arc flash hazard calculations um, typically if the most conservative result is typically momentary um, a very good uh, compromise is interrupting. Interrupting is where all the motors less than 50 horsepower are dropped off. All the motors greater than 50 horsepower are still online. Or if you're running a shutdown case, 30 cycle where all the motors are off. Um, so you can model all three of these and get a very, very accurate depiction of the system. Now, since this um, program originally came out, we've added the integrated model. And that's what's so cool about the ANSI standards. We can integrate for all the relays momentary through the momentary interrupting and 30 cycle calculation. So if you have a, a momentary trip on a low voltage breaker, integrated handles that instantly. If one of the upstream trip devices um, takes much longer to trip, the AC current may be decaying from momentary through interrupting through 30 cycle we handle that and integrate directly through that we also handle multiple source branches through the integration um, perfectly um, so as one unit trips um, that current is continually um, updated and, and integrated with the other um, um, feeders that are still online so we'll just look at the worst case right now typically we have what's called um, max time setting. So you can have a clipping um, situation based on IEEE 1584 where they say at the two second limit you can stop your arc flash calculation. The reason they allow you to do that is um, actually there's a couple reasons. The first is 
nobody's crazy enough to stay at the 18-inch mark or the 24 or the 36-inch mark through the, an entire arc blast. You're either going to get the heck out of there or you're going to be blown out by the arc blast. And so a two-second number is a, is a conservative number to make sure that you're out of the way by that point. Um, the other um, reason is uh, Pacific Gas and Electric did about 256 arc flash tests about a year and a half ago, and what they found was very close to what IEEE was doing is at 480 volts, they found that typically the arc gap would self-extinguish um, because it would blow out all the copper at about 90 cycles. So that's very close to the two-second realm. They also found out below 250 volts that they could not maintain an arc at... Um, 208 volts for anything longer than about uh, six to seven cycles. So out of 120 some tests at 208 volts, um, six or seven cycles was the typical limit um, at that voltage unless it's, it was being, you know, uh, enhanced by some other sort of heat element, element. And all this coincides with many tests that were done back in the 60s and 70s, um, investigations and things by uh, Kaufman and Dunkey Jacobs and things. So this may be a little bit conservative or, or not conservative enough, six or seven cycles. Um, so for this case, we'll put two seconds there, even though the testing shows six or seven cycles, just to coincide with the um, IEEE standards. However, if you want to get... Um, more accurate results, I believe, somewhere in the uh, um, 20 to 30 cycle range would be appropriate at 208 volts. We have four output types. We can have a detailed. We'll go through that. We have including main, excluding main, or you can do a combination where you do including and excluding, which would be typical for a switchgear lineup, which is isolated and barrier protected. I'm going to go over detailed first. So when we hit OK, I'm going to come up to this little arc flash guy and press it. Then I just left mouse double click, and there are our results. What we're looking at is the detailed calculation. So we're looking at the let-through energy for each one of these devices. So in this case, the let-through energy for this breaker is 8.6 cals, number 3 PPE, has a 68-inch arc flash boundary. The let-through energy for this device is 15.3 cals, number 3 PPE. Okay? So, in essence, what this gives you is a detailed calculation, or what some people call line side, load side, front side, back side. So, if I fault downstream of this device, and it's isolated and barrier protected, it's going to trip and give me 8.6 cals of let-through energy. If I vault on the primary side, this device is going to let through 15.3 cals, number 3 PPE, assuming that this is isolated and barrier protected. So you could create an easy power label with two values for this cubicle. 